Hello, I'm Reverend Jimmy Smith, and welcome to Turn Around Ministries. Thank God for this another wonderful opportunity here on KAZ Radio to share the Word of God as we begin a new year. What a good place to begin in the Word of God, not knowing what the Lord has in store for us, but we know that He do all things well. We come now to the book of Romans and chapter 12 as we consider verses 1 and 2. And the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This morning we want to talk about living for God. There's no better decision than to walk with the Lord, than to be on His side. We thank God for salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in my heart that God raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then after salvation, there is discipleship to walk with God, to follow God, for God has a magnificent and wonderful plan for our life. And it doesn't matter how ambitious you may be concerning your life, I guarantee you, God's plan is better than your plan. God's plan is better than my plan. We come to verse 1 of chapter 12. Here we find Paul, as he writes under the inspiration of God, he urged the body of Christ. In fact, we see the word beseech. It simply means he's begging at this point. He's begging, he's pleading, he's urging the body of Christ to walk with God. And he does that on the platform of the mercies of God. He says, I'm campaigning for Jesus and I'm seeking and I'm trying very hard to get the church folk to get those who say they love the Lord, those who say they know God and love God and that God is the best thing going. He says, I'm seeking very hard to get God's people to walk with God. And so he says, I'm coming to you on the platform of the mercies of God. If we define the term mercy, what does it mean? It means that God did not give me what I deserve. What do I deserve? I deserve his wrath. I deserve hell. I deserve the horrors of hell. I deserve judgment. But instead of judgment, God gave me mercy. God gave me grace. Hasn't God been good? He's been good all the days of our lives. God was thinking of us even before we were thinking of him. We know God to be consistent. We know God to be faithful. All that we have and all that we're able to do is because of the grace of God, the goodness of God. The psalm writer said in Psalm 23 and verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On the platform of the fact that God has been wonderful to us and good to us, here we find the Holy Spirit uses Paul to pin this letter to tell us that we owe God something. He didn't save us just to sit down. He didn't save us to live our own life, our own way, our own plan. I'm excited about the reality that God has a purpose and God has a plan for me. And I know that whereas I'm guessing, God knows. Whereas I'm assuming and hoping and wondering through this journey, God is able to lead me and to guide me. God is able to bring success in my life, able to bring prosperity in my life, able to bring purpose in my life, able to bring peace and healing and joy and desire in my life. But the question is, it's not an issue of God's ability. The question is, am I willing to follow him? Am I willing to follow him? And if I'm going to follow him, God says, follow me a certain way, not any old way. Don't come to me with your leftovers. Don't come to me with your rags, but come to me with 
a sincerity and come to me with holiness. Note the text as we consider further. Here, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. The next word we see is holy. And then the next word we see is acceptable unto God. Make no mistake about it. A, sept, a holy sacrifice is the only kind that God accepts. God says, yes, give me your life. God says, yes, follow me. Walk with me. Present yourself. But when I do that, he says, come with a spirit, with a desire, with a want to, with a longing to live for him. Not just playing church. Some believers are happy to go to church maybe twice a month. And if the preacher preached too long, they're gone. There is not that real commitment. Some just want to sing in the choir and not really faithful to that. Some want to just stand at the door as an usher every now and then. God says, come to me with wholeness, with completeness, with absolute desire, and come and walk with me. Integrity is what I am in the dark. Character and integrity is what I am when no one else is around. Sometimes believers want to appear and act pious because the preacher is around. The mother's board, the deacons, Sunday school teacher, the Lord says he is always around. He's a very present help. He is omnipresent. God is always looking and watching and observing. After all, he's the one providing the oxygen. And so God says, come to me with a spirit and a passion of holiness. I'm amazed by believers who do not want to enjoy the fellowship of the saints, do not want to come to a Christian dinner, uh, to fellowship after service, but they love going to the party. They love going to the club, love going to hang with the world. God says, wait a minute, make a decision. And may that decision be, Lord, because you died for me, that's enough right there. Because you died for me, because you love me, I want to give my life to you because of the promise of heaven. Because of you, I can escape the horrors of hell. Because of you, the devil has to let me go. Because of you, I don't have to even listen to the lust of my flesh. Sometimes it's just me in the way. Can't blame everything on the devil. I'm not speaking up for him. He's no friend of mine. But sometimes it's me who gets me in trouble. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. All I want you to do, Jesus says, all I command you to do, Jesus says, you are mine. I paid for you with my blood. I'm bought with the price, the precious blood of Christ. Now God says, glorify me in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. Glorify me, and he's worthy of it. And so he says, if you're going to follow me, follow me in sincerity. In the book of 1 John, there are three themes to that book. One of the themes of 1 John is fellowship. The Greek term is koinonia, meaning that we can have fellowship with God. We can walk with God. But Amos put it best in Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 when he says, How can two walk together unless they agree? There is the African proverb which says that one person may run faster, but two can go further. Well, the reality is, yes, that's true, but two can only go further when they're walking together. There's another Bible verse that tells us that a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. But with Jesus and I, we can go further. Jesus can take me further. Jesus can take you further than you can take yourself. I want to encourage you. I want to urge you to allow Jesus to work in your life. He tells us to come to him with the holy sacrifice. And he tells us that we can do it as we allow God to transform our mind. And that's what verse 2 says. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Allow God to change my thinking, change my mind. When my thinking change, my life 
change. When God enters my heart and my mind, God literally turned me around. He literally changed my opinion, my ideology, my philosophy, and I discover that God's way is prosperous. I discover, discover that God's way is successful, that God's way is abundant. God's way is, is loving and kind and gentle and peaceable and righteous. God's way doesn't hurt me. My own thinking will. The world's way and thinking and ideology and philosophy not only does hurt, but it will hurt. There's a verse in Ephesians and chapter 4, beginning in verse 22. Verse 22 says to take off the old man. Verse 23 says, renew the mind. And then verse 24 says, put on the new man. Beloved, there will be no putting off, nor will there be any putting on if there first is not the changing of my mind, if there first is not the changing of my thinking. And as we begin a new year, beloved, aren't you tired of your own thinking? Just look around. Just look at where you are. Look at what's going on. Who got you in the mess that you're in? One of the things we discover in James chapter 1, beginning in verse 13 through 15, we see something that God cannot do. And he says, I cannot lead you to do the wrong thing. I will not bring evil desires into your heart. I'm not the cause, God says, of your iniquity. I'm not the cause of your wickedness. I'm not the cause of your depraved and corrupt mind and spirit and ways. And listen, beloved, God has a better plan. I dare you to give him a chance. He is able to work things out. He's able to intervene on behalf of our life. He desires to bless us. The question is, do I desire to walk with him? And herein lie the problem. The problem is not with God. The problem is not with the church. The problem is not with the word of God. The problem is within myself. Me, self, is the problem. We discover in the Old Testament, what was it that got Lucifer in trouble? The son of the morning, he was called. The archangel, the one who was right there at the very presence of God. God had made him beautiful. God had made him wise. God had placed him right there at the mount of God. He was right there. And yet, five things he said. It was the same word. He said, I, 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 I. And that's the problem. The problem is that I'm so caught up with I. I'm so caught up with self. In essence, I'm just plain old selfish. God says to die to myself, to pick up my cross daily and to follow him. And God will bountifully bless my life. God will use us in a tremendous and awesome way. There's a great verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, I hath not seen nor ear heard the things that God has in store for those who love him. If only I would make up my mind. I cannot serve two masters. I cannot serve money and God. I will lean more to the money. I will lean more to the world. But aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of that? Just think about where you are now. Just think about how you got there. God, he doeth all things well. And I don't know about you, but I want to agree with the Apostle Paul when he said in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, for me to live is Christ. And when I die, it is gain. I agree with the word of God. I agree with the Apostle Paul concerning what he said there in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I don't know about you, but beloved, I, I believe, I'm, I'm convinced that things will get better. That this time next year, expecting things to be better. Why? Because of the change of 
ideology, the change of mind, the change of philosophy, the change of direction, and may the direction be, yes, Lord, yea, Lord, yes, Lord, to your will, and yes, Lord, to your way. And I guarantee you, God's plan is more effective, more powerful, more bountiful, more fruitful than your plan. And I want to urge you as we would begin a new year, a new time, a new beginning, may we begin it with God as we allow him to speak to our heart and speak to my, our mind. My name is Reverend Smith. What a wonderful opportunity. I thank God. God bless.